Hello everyone, welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Spencer and Trina dined by candlelight in New York City at a restaurant with a view of the city's skyline. Trina raved about going to see Moulin Rouge with Spencer. Trina stated she didn't think she was as intriguing as the characters in the play, but Spencer said he couldn't take his gaze away from Trina. Spencer and Trina admitted they were hungry and exchanged loving glances as they prepared to order dinner. Spencer and Trina sipped champagne after finishing their meal. Trina stated that she was aware that Spencer had found it difficult to leave Port Charles because to Ace. And I just wanted to let you know how grateful I am that you made time for us, Trina remarked sweetly. Spencer gave Trina a friendly smile. I love us, Spencer declared. Me too. And, Spencer Cassadine, I adore you. Thank you so much. Trina said Spencer as the two of them locked cases. Spencer questioned Trina's silence after he declared his love to her in their hotel room. Trina stated that she had learned from Stella that people who waited were rewarded. Spencer stated that he would have waited an eternity till he had Trina express her feelings for him. Trina inquired as to what Spencer was contemplating. Spencer proclaimed to Trina that he was the luckiest guy in the world. I've loved you for a long time, Trina. I've loved you since the day I met you, Spencer admitted as he and Trina held hands. Trina remarked that it seemed like an eternity since she and Spencer first met. On-screen flashbacks showed Spencer and Trina recalling crucial experiences from their time together, including the couple's first kiss, Trina diving into Spencer's arms in Greenland, and Trina presenting Spencer one of the turtle doves. Spencer reassured Trina as they held hands at the dinner table. The best is yet to come, Spencer murmured as he kissed Trina's hand against the backdrop of the New York City skyline. A server approached Spencer and Trina and asked if they wanted to see the dessert menu. Spencer deferred to Trina, who confidently stated that the couple had to go. Spencer asked for the bill, and he and Trina exchanged glances before leaving. Trina was surprised to see red rose petals on her and Spencer's bed when they returned to their hotel room. Trina and Spencer exchanged wistful glances before starting to kiss. Spencer lifted Trina's body and carried her to their bed as the two carefully undressed each other. Spencer and Trina made love for the first time close to a window that looked out over the stars over New York City, as music played in the background. Spencer and Trina cuddled in bed after making love. Trina and Spencer kissed before she leaned against Spencer's shoulder. Spencer reassured Trina as they lay in bed together. Do you know when I'm at my happiest? If I'm with you, I really mean it. Spencer stated as he and Trina drew closer together. Spencer and Trina kissed once more. Nina awoke in bed in Sunny's penthouse when she heard Sunny enter. Sunny apologized for waking Nina. Nina commented on how much she enjoyed waking up to Sunny as he undressed. Sunny climbed into Nina's bed. Nina informed Sunny that Charlotte was acting out. According to Sunny, family is the most important thing in the world. Nina, with Sunny's remarks still fresh in her memory, stated that she and Sunny needed to discuss Gladys. Gladys had lost a lot of money gambling at Selena's poker games at the Savoy, according to Nina. Sunny was enraged with Gladys, claiming that Gladys should have known better after what gambling had done to Mike years before. I hate to tell you this, but it gets worse, Nina replied. Nina explained how Gladys had stolen Sasha's money and how Gladys and Dr. Montag had planned to keep Sasha a firm cliff against her will. Sunny became even enraged when he mentioned Gladys. Gladys is like family to me. This has gone on for far too long. That is entirely my fault. Gladys will be dealt with, Sunny stated emphatically. Nina noticed how late it was and pushed Sunny to go to bed. Sunny noticed a flurry of paperwork pertaining to Olivia's wedding plans for Sunny and Nina. Nina, according to Sunny, had too much on her plate. Nina acknowledged to being overworked. However, she stated that the only thing that mattered was the planning of her and Sunny's wedding. Sunny shocked Nina by saying he had an idea. 
Why don't we elope? Sunny inquired. Nina was initially hesitant, but Sunny proposed that they fly to Sunny's private island the next day to marry. What do you say? Sunny spoke in hushed tones. I say, yes, 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 yes. Nina yelled as she tossed the stack of papers she'd been studying into the air. Sunny and Nina were overjoyed. Willow paid Drew a visit at the hospital. Willow informed Drew that she and Nina had become more close. Drew was pleased for Willow and inquired whether Michael had thawed toward Nina. Michael, according to Willow, is obstinate. Drew stated that individuals should not waste their time keeping grudges because life is short. Drew thanked Willow for paying him a visit. Willow imagined herself meeting Harmony after she left Drew's room. Harmony indicated in the vision that she had a warning for Willow. Harmony appeared to say, your dad, and I'm warning you, Willow, do not trust him. Carly told Michael in the gatehouse at the Quartermain estate that Judge Kim had used Drew to improve Kim's career. Carly and Michael alleged that Drew and Carly were the victims of insider trading by Drew and Carly. Michael and Carly discussed ways to improve Drew's public image. Carly intended to use Alexis to publish a series of negative articles on Judge Kim. Michael mentioned that he might know who had tipped off the SEC, and he promised to find out who had turned Drew and Carly in for insider trading. Carly went to the hospital to see Drew. Willow later ran into Michael at the gatehouse. Something was amiss with Willow, Michael reasoned. Willow revealed that she had dozed asleep in the hospital lounge after visiting Drew. Willow mentioned having a dream about Harmony, but it was only a dream, Willow adamantly claimed. Elizabeth and Finn had also said goodnight in the hospital, but a short time later, Elizabeth caught Finn alone in the hospital's shower room. Elizabeth entered the shower with Finn completely dressed. Elizabeth and Finn kissed briefly, but Elizabeth remained in her scrubs and finally left. Elizabeth wiped her mouth with a towel on her way out. Elizabeth afterwards spotted Amy at the nurse's station. Emmy rambled on before Finn arrived. Emmy noticed that Elizabeth and Finn both had wet hair. Finn grinned. Ava arrived at Windermere after being trapped in a torrential downpour. Ava observed that the hurricane had only hit Spoon Island. The storm had caused power disruptions, according to Giles, a house butler. As the pallor flickered, Ava stood in front of the fireplace in the living room. Giles handed Ava an envelope containing photos of Windermere from the real estate business Ava had engaged to sell Spoon Island. Ava sipped her cocktail while staring at the images. I can't wait to get off this island, Ava thought to herself. Ava raised a glass to the end of the Windermere era, recalling her quarrel with Nicholas months earlier when she had knocked him unconscious. After the lights had gone off, Ava gently made her way around the living room in the dark. When the lights came back on, Ava noticed someone and shrieked as she dropped her martini glass. Ava was taken aback when she discovered Mason had infiltrated the estate. Ava worried how Mason got in, and she told him to leave. Mason astounded Ava when he revealed that someone else had accompanied him to the island. Ava leaned against the hearth, looking for something to defend herself with. You tipped us off, Ava. That wasn't smart, Mason said as he approached Ava. Laura and Kevin met with a financier named Hans Moller in Geneva, Switzerland. Laura begged Hans to assist her in locating Nicholas. Hans inquired as to why Laura believed Nicholas was in Geneva. Because his money is right here, Laura explained. Hans informed Laura and Kevin of the recent withdrawals from Nicholas Bank. Hans added that Nicholas had made the withdrawals in person, indicating to Laura that Nicholas was still alive. Hans left to give Laura and Kevin time to go over the withdrawal sheets. Laura hugged Kevin, overjoyed at the news that Nicholas was alive. Laura noticed a huge withdrawal in the records and wondered if Nicholas had used it to conceal his whereabouts and plans. Kevin said that he and Laura couldn't be sure, and he proposed that they return to their hotel room to celebrate Nicholas's survival. Laura agreed and left with Kevin. A man was seen entering Han's office from behind not long after. The individual was identified as Nicholas, 
who stated that he need another withdrawal. Nicholas had just missed Laura and Kevin, according to Hans. Hans urged Nicholas to be a good son and do what was right. I plan to, Nicholas answered with a sneer and a malicious tone in his voice. The living room at Windermere, where Alva had been with Mason, appeared to be vacant while Nicholas spoke to Hans. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.